patient is a two month old with DeGeorge syndrome and an antenatal cardiac diagnosis of aortic atresia, aortic arch hypoplasia with coarctation, a large paramembranous VSD, bilateral SVCs, with an incidental finding of an aberrant right subclavian artery during his definitive repair. This video will demonstrate how Dr. James Tweddle does a Yasui procedure and how he manages an aberrant right subclavian artery translocation. A redo sternotomy is performed and the anatomy is inspected. As much circumferential dissection as possible is done pre-bypass. As we discovered early on that the right subclavian artery was aberrant, the right common carotid artery was mobilized circumferentially and isolated. A coolie carotid clamp was placed at the base of the artery in a snare distally. A longitudinal arteriotomy is made at the distal end of the vessel to allow for aberrant right subclavian translocation at another time. An endocide anastomosis is then carried out with a 4-0 PTFE shunt. The distal end of the PTFE shunt is beveled prior to anastomosis. Once adequate hemostasis is achieved, heparin is given and the arterial cannula is inserted and secured to the shunt. The inferior vena cava is cannulated along with the left superior vena cava as the right superior vena cava was thought to be too small to cannulate directly. Cardiopulmonary bypass is initiated and snares are loosely placed around the brachiocephalic vessels while we cool to 18 degrees Celsius. The branch pulmonary artery bands are removed and the aortic arch is mobilized. The aberrant right subclavian artery is located and snared and antegrade cardioplegia is delivered through the arterial limb of the circuit. Antegrade cerebral perfusion is then initiated. The main pulmonary artery is divided. The aberrant right subclavian artery is then suture ligated at its origin and divided and the distal artery is mobilized from behind the esophagus and the trachea. The ductus arteriosus is ligated and divided. As there was no posterior shell found, the aortic isthmus was not divided. The descending thoracic aorta is further mobilized, and the first three sets of intercostal arteries are divided with bipolar cautery. The vent that was in the right atrium is then placed into the SVC and snared. The common carotid artery is isolated and opened longitudinally. The aberrant right subclavian artery is then anastomosed to the right common carotid artery in an endocide fashion with a continuous adoproline. The branch pulmonary arteries are gently dilated and did not require further patch augmentation. They are then snared with vessel loops and the right ventriculotomy site is identified and marked through the main pulmonary artery stump with a right angle clamp. The aortic arch reconstruction is very similar to the way that Dr. Tweddle does in Norwood arch reconstruction. The underside of the ductus is incised and the incision is continued along the underside of the aortic arch down the lateral edge of the ascending aorta, being careful not to spiral the incision as you go down. The incision terminates approximately 2 to 3 millimeters above the top of the pulmonary artery stump. A Damas case stencil is then performed. A cutback is made to the left of the facing commissure of the pulmonary root. The anastomosis between the cutback and the ascending aorta is done with a continuous 8 proline. The left lateral edge of the ascending aorta is then anastomosed with a continuous 7-0 proline to the corresponding edge on the descending thoracic aorta. Once this is completed, a cutback is made into the descending thoracic aorta to create tissue redundancy, and a pulmonary homograph patch that has already been thought and prepared is brought onto the field.
the three centimeter pulmonary homograft patch is then brought onto the field and cut into a quarter circle shape. The arrow colors on the pulmonary homograft patch correspond to the colors on the aortic arch and appear in the order that they are completed. The secundum atrial septal defect is then closed primarily and the right atriotomy is closed with a continuous 5-0 proline. The ventriculotomy incision is then made along the right ventricular free wall. It's extended and enlarged to approximately 15 millimeters in total. A small amount of right ventricular outflow tract muscle is also excised. The ventricular septal defect closure then begins with four pledget supported Tevdex sutures placed along the inferior rim of the defect. The four Tevdex sutures are then bookended by two pledget supported proline sutures that will be used as runners. The left ventricle to aortic baffle is then completed. A bovine pericardial patch is used. The Tevdek and proline sutures are all passed through the patch and tied down. The Tevdek sutures are then cut and the proline sutures are left in place to be used as runners. The ends of the proline sutures are then run along the superior rim of the defect around the aortic valve and tied in the middle. This clip shows you the location of the aortic valve. The right ventricular outflow tract is then reconstructed with an 11 millimeter pulmonary homograft. The distal anastomosis is completed first. The proximal right ventricular outflow tract is then reconstructed. The posterior half of the proximal homograft is secured directly to the ventriculotomy with a continuous 6-0 proline. An anterior hood is then created out of bovine pericardium and secured with continuous 6-0 proline. The patient was then successfully weaned and decannulated from cardiopulmonary bypass. Postoperative transesophageal echocardiogram demonstrated normal function with no residual left ventricular outflow tract obstruction nor obstruction through the RV to PA conduit, and no residual ventricular septal defect.